Hey everyone, this is uh, Luke Humphrey here with Hanson's Coaching Services, um, calculating caloric needs for the marathon. We, uh, we've all heard of hitting the wall, and uh, some of us have experienced it, uh, so hopefully today we can uh, go over some things that will help you avoid that in the future. Um, first thing we need to know is how much do we burn in terms of uh, calories. Uh, general rule of thumb is one kcal or calorie per kilometer per kilogram of body weight and uh, I do understand that's a lot of uh, kilos in a short uh, short sentence there so uh, let's break it down into a little bit more detail. Uh, for an example we're going to use a 150 pound runner uh, take the 150 pounds divide by 2.2 kilograms per pound and you will get the number of kilograms that this person is which is just over 68 kilograms second thing you need to do is uh, take the marathon distance and in, and in uh, kilometers it is 42.195 and multiply that by the person's body weight and you get a grand total of 2877 calories burned throughout the marathon um, you know physiological testing will give us uh, a more uh, exact picture of what's going on um, for instance in our office we we do uh, what's called an RMR uh, or R, yeah, RMR test, resting, resting metabolic rate testing, uh, which would give a person a caloric baseline, um, kind of see how, how hot the engine's burning, I, I guess is a good way to put it. Um, but it gives them a good idea of the total calories that they're burning. And then you can also put that person up on the treadmill and do a VO2 max test with them. And we can actually see... Um, the calories per hour they're burning at any given pace and we can also see where those calories are coming from so for instance uh, we can see at a certain pace um, you know if they're burning a thousand calories an hour we can actually show that person uh, what percentage is coming from uh, fat and what per percentage is coming from uh, carbohydrates so we can get a very good idea of, of what uh, a person is burning um, but for now um, you know, this is the easiest way to do that. Uh, what we're interested in now is how many calories of that is coming from glycogen or stored carbohydrate, um, since we know that that's a limited fuel source. You know, with fat, we have thousands and thousands of calories stored, and, and running out of fat is really not going to be an issue, um, whereas carbohydrate is a, a very serious issue, and, and if you've hit the wall, then, then that's what you have done. So we look at the average total uh, caloric expenditure for the marathon, and this is based on, on body weight. Um, so basically 100 pounds all the way up to 240, 250 range. And you can see, you know, obviously the bigger you are, the more calories that you're, that you're going to be burning. So just take a look here, um, kind of get an idea where you're at. Um, you can also do the calculation um, to get an exact number for yourself. Average uh, carbohydrate usage during the marathon, uh, the faster we run um, in terms of percentage of VO2 max, the higher that number is going to be. Um, if, if, you, if you know that we, we at 100% carbo or 100 VO2 max, we're burning 100% carbohydrates. So the amount of carbohydrates we're burning is basically a percentage, can be based off a percentage of our VO2 max that we're running as well. So, uh, you know, at 50%. VO2 max, you're burning, you know, more fat than carbohydrate, and as that number approaches 100% VO2 max, you're burning uh, more and more close to 100% of carbohydrates. So, just keep that in mind. 60% um, VO2 max, I would say, would be more for your um, beginner, um, maybe a maybe a recreational runner, um, but if you're if you're pretty well trained, you're probably going to be in that 70% um, range, and then the more elite you are, um, the higher that number would go. So um, world-class athletes are, you know, 85, um, even maybe as high as 90% of their VO2 max that they can sustain for uh, a full marathon. So again, take a, take a look based on your weight and uh, kind of where you're at in terms of uh, ability, and you can get a pretty good idea of uh, where you're at for the number of carbohydrates that you're actually using as well. So comparison of storage versus usage, uh, we know what we're burning. We have that the large number we, we found first, and we know um, how much 
carbohydrate we're using, but we don't know how much we can store. Um, and nobody can really store enough carbohydrate um, and run a marathon based on performance. You can, you can run slow enough and burn um, primarily fat if you want, um, but at that point you're still going to be out there such, such a long time that you're still going to end up using your carbohydrate stores. Uh, you know, quick point here, just, you know, sometimes I think we get, we, we see the total number of storage and, and we think that, uh, um, you know, that's, we're going to be able to use all of that, but it's not particularly the case because carbohydrate isn't transferable and that actually should be, glycogen isn't transferable. So, for instance, if I have, you know, a lot of slow twitch muscle fibers in my upper body, and I have a lot of stored glycogen there, that can't be transferred to my legs if they're running out of glycogen. And, you know, it can't, glycogen can't move along the body once it's stored, it's, it's where it's at. So um, you might, you can't really use all of the carbohydrate that you have stored. So just keep that in mind and we'll look into that a little bit more here. So the potential carbohydrate storage that you can use is gonna be mainly in your leg muscle mass because that's what's doing all the work. Um, so again, here for a male, males have an average of 21% of their muscle mass in their legs. So you can, you can get an idea based on your weight, how much leg mass you have, and then also, um, how many calories of, of glycogen or carbohydrate that you can store. So again, take a look at that, uh, chart, figure out where you're at, and, uh, and then you can get a number on where you're at for, uh, for storage. Females, just a little bit less uh, body mass, um, uh, muscle mass in their, in their lower legs, 20% compared to 21% of, of males. Um, you can see there that the storage is, is definitely significantly smaller than the males just because um, on the most part, males are going to weigh a little bit less than, than the, um, females are going to weigh a little bit less than the males. So keep that in mind. Again, take a look at the chart and, uh, and see where you're at. So just for a quick comparison, <clears throat> we can look at uh, body weight, uh, and then we just use seventy percent VO two max for an average of what a person is going to run their their uh, marathon at. And you can see, so let's just use a sixty five kilo uh, male. They can uh, they're going to burn seventeen eighty two um, kcal's at uh, seventy percent. They can store a max of about eleven hundred calories, so they're going to have a almost a 700 uh, calorie difference in, um, in what, they, what they have and what they need. And that is vital for, for us because now we know uh, what we need to do to replace it. Same thing with the females. Uh, main thing to look at here is it, is it is interesting that that difference is um, a lot less, um, but still there is a difference. And uh, so any idea that you, know, that you can survive a marathon without taking in um, a lot, you know, any, any carbohydrate um, is really kind of um, false, I guess, to say. This, I think that for most women, even the most elite women, um, need to take in um, some form of carbohydrate. Now, it may not be as much as a male would need to take running the same pace, but it is still uh, some, and it should be considered for um, optimal performance. <clears throat> and then <clears throat> one thing that, and this is what I admitted to, last time I did this, and that was the final source of glycogen. Because if you look at those numbers, you're probably thinking, oh man, that's a ton of calories, and, and it really is. It, it really is going to take practice to be able to uh, negate those, those deficits. Um, so the final source, actually to you have your blood glucose, but honestly, if you're dipping into that, you're not going to last. You're going to hit the wall. Um, that's really the point of no return. Once you, that's your kind of your final straw of, of fuel source. Um, so ideally, you're not dipping that into that at all. So I won't even wouldn't even count that. Um, the second is your liver glycogen, and you can, you know, I did a lot of researching and trying to find um, if there was any differences between uh, men and women in uh, liver glycogen storage capacities, and and nothing that I looked at indicated anything. It just always gave a range of three to four hundred calories that the liver can store. So. Um, I think to be safe on on, uh, on the women's side, you would use the smaller of that. The males, you could probably use the larger end of that range. So, um, but don't think you're going to get three to four hundred calories from that. Um, you're not. You're going to get significantly less because the brain 
in the spinal cord need the carbohydrate or the glycogen that's in the liver. So that's going to be the first thing. Your body is very good at wanting to stay alive, so it is going to uh, protect that source of fuel. Um, and as long as as long as there's glycogen in there, it will it will use it for the brain and, and the central nervous system. But it will provide you some uh, energy um, for the muscles as the muscles become depleted. Because unlike muscle mass in the upper body, you know glycogen isn't transferable, but it is in the liver. The liver can actually break it down and send it down to uh, muscle mass in the legs. So I would say off of that deficit number you you got by subtracting your ability minus your storage to get that uh, that deficit number, you could probably subtract uh, one to 200 calories from that total deficit number. And this will make sense here in a second. So how can I improve this? Um, something that we wanted to, to look at. Um, improve your ability to take in calories. And that's really the main point I want you to see in this is that no matter what, you're going you're gonna to have a deficit and you need to be able to take in calories. Um, and that's the easiest thing. That's something you can practice now. You can pra you could start practicing it right away. You can practice it all year if you want. Uh, improve your muscle fiber makeup. That's harder to do. That's more of a long-term thing. That's probably beyond the scope of, of this discussion, um, and all all of those things. But it can it can be done, and you can actually um, you can actually do some interesting things with muscle fibers if you're if you're uh, diligent on doing those things. Um, the last thing is, and here's the second biggest thing I want you to take away from this, is to make sure you're running at an appropriate ability. So, you know, if you go out and, and I see I see this all the time, and even with, with people I coach, and they, they feel like it feels so easy in the beginning, so they go out incredibly fast compared to what they want to run at the end of the day. Um, and all that does is burn that glycogen even faster. So, what if you would have went out on your pace that you were capable of running, you know, you might have been able to stretch that out for a couple hours worth of running. Whereas by going out too fast, now you scale that back and you might only be able to make it an hour and a half on that. So you really you really put yourself in a bigger hole by going out faster than what your what your ability is. So um, those are the two biggest things I want you to take away from this. Uh, learn to take in calories and um, run it run at your ability, make pacing a priority in the marathon. So developing a fuel strategy, the big, the easiest thing you can do, um, and it's the best way not to bonk, is, is to have a strategy, practice it, and, and learn it, and, and be comfortable with taking that number of calories on during the run. So just, just for an example, looking at our charts, um, 65 kilogram male at 70% is going to have a deficit of four to 600 calories, maybe a little bit more. Um, how do we fix that? And where I got the 600 from is, uh, you know, you have to take 600 minus uh, 1 to 200 calories of, of liver glycogen. So you're in that 4 to 600 range for um, for that person. So it's a lot of calories. It definitely is. I mean, you can consider that some people eat that for a meal, um, you know, and that's, that's a lot of calories. So we need to figure out a way to be able to get those in throughout the marathon. So what I would do is just this is worst case scenario that the person has to make up 600 calories just to show you that it can still be done. Um, let's say 600 and they're going to run a two. They were looking for a 245 marathon. So doing the math, it comes out to 218 calories an hour, which is significant. Um, so what you do, um, start early. Start when it feels comfortable. When you feel like the running is the easiest, you can you can get those calories in a lot better. So what I would do is a gel at the start. Right at the start of the race, you know, if you're in your corral, you know, and the start time is 7.30, you know, at 7.25, take that gel, you know, and, and, and use that at the start. That's 100 calories there. Um, another gel at 40 minutes into the race is another 100 calories. So you're already at 200 calories in the first hour. Um, and then you have the aid stations. You have the, the Gatorade and whatever at, at the aid station. So, you know, there's another you know, two ounces times maybe four stations in that first hour can get you 75 calories. So, you know, a cup might have four to five ounces in it, but as, as many of us are aware, um, 
you probably aren't going to get the whole cup in your mouth. It's you're probably going to be wearing as much as as you got in your mouth. So just keep that in mind. You have to factor that in. That you know, yeah, you took a cup with five ounces in it, but how much did you actually get in? Um, so even here, by doing that, you're at 275 calories, well above pace. Um, and if you can train your stomach to to tolerate that over over the course of your marathon training, it shouldn't be any problem. The second hour, you know, stay on that same schedule. Another 40 minutes, so an hour 20 into the race. Take the second gel. It's another 100 calories. Right at two hours, staying on that 40-minute schedule, there's another 100 calories. So, again, you're right at 200 calories. You only need 18 calories to, to keep the rate going, but you're already ahead of schedule. So anything over that you get. So if you can get another four aid stations in, you know, there's another 75 calories. But you're setting yourself up so that you may not need – to take in as much that third hour when you're really focusing on trying to push the pace, trying to run fast, um, and trying to finish strong. So third hour, anything you get, maybe 50 calories, maybe not. Um, it might be it might be half of that. Um, I would suggest, you know, if you're looking at that 245 and you're at 230, two hours and 30 minutes into the race, I would personally, I would take a gel that last 15 minutes. It's still far enough out where you can you can get benefit you can get a benefit from those calories so you know if somebody says i'm not taking it i don't need anything past 23 you know even at five minute miles you know it still gives you time to get use of those calories so um, just consider that even if it's late into the race it might be just enough to get you through and feeling strong so you know adding that up you're you're getting in six to seven hundred calories right there and that's worst case scenario um for this for this particular example so you can see that if you plan it right you definitely can do it and you know it's not something that is going to be easy it's going to take work it's going to take practice it's going to take diligence on your part but it definitely definitely can be done so take home is even the smallest of females going to need taking calories during the marathon you're going to need you're going to need to make up some sort of deficit um, you know obviously it's not going to be as much as a 250 pound guy but there still is a, a small deficit there um, caloric need versus intake will be a large factor overall for your ability to form. If you're, if you're healthy and you're trained well going into the marathon, then this is going to be a large part of, of finishing those details out and making sure that you, um, you can have the race that you wanted. Last thing, figure out a plan. If you can just do a plan, make it early, um, into your training and practice throughout your training. And the nice thing is, majority of your calories are becoming from, you know, gels or chews or whatever the heck you use, you know, that's where you're getting majority of, of your calories. So you can practice those on long runs. You don't need to go sit out bottles and you don't need to, you know, put up tables at the end of your driveway and do loops. You don't need to do that. You can, you can put gels in your shorts pockets. You can carry, you know, chews with you. You can carry the calories you need with you and not you know, not be uh, annoyed with a bouncing water bottle or anything like that. So it definitely can be done, and it's something that, that you know, should definitely be practiced and, and can really make a huge difference in overall for your performance. So that's it. Uh, hopefully you got something out of here that you can take with you, put towards your next uh, training segment and uh, a PR for you, and uh Finish a marathon as strong as you as you ever have. So thanks for listening. We'll see you next time.